gives me great pleasure to introduce to you right now a champion of truth and liberty. I think one of the most honest politicians we've had in my lifetime. U.S. Congressman Dennis Kucinich is here to speak to you. Let's hear a warm welcome. Give your love to Dennis Kucinich. day in this uh, place of great beauty. We celebrate the beauty of nature and I'm also here to celebrate the wondrous nature of you. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. The presence that we have here today binds us as a community. It empowers us. It strengthens us. We must become visible in mass if we're going to bring about the change that we want in the society. And when we do that, we extend our reach. We bring about new possibilities. And the creative spark that births action can usher in a new world. We have to say to America, open up America. Show yourself. Time for mass action. This is why and how. Recent movements for freedom in Tunisia and Egypt gained momentum. This is how Gandhi cast off the British Empire. This is how America's suffragettes ended up getting for women the right to vote. This is how Dr. Martin Luther King's march on Washington became a pivotal moment in the civil rights history of this country. People become visible. They go to the streets. They linked arms. They marched. They sang, we shall overcome. They walked the uplit path of social and economic justice. People have been on this path, and it's time for us to begin to walk that path too. People then marched to glory, but not for themselves, but for the benefit of generations to come. We gather here today in a common determination for change, a sense of commonality of purpose awakens, a purpose, a sense of awareness grows. The moment arrives to exercise a new commitment, to cast off an old order of things. This same awareness brought America's founders to write the Declaration of Independence and to proclaim a new order follows. Today it is not a financial deficit that will bring America down. It is a deficit of public action. When people discover what happens when one person determines to make a difference and then merges with the many like-minded, it becomes visible. New possibilities unfold, and a new order follows. Now, Seattle, you understand this, because in 1999, Seattle hosted the World Trade Organization rally, and Seattle was the host of the Teamsters and the Turtles marching arm in arm, not too far from this area, demanding once and for all that we have enforceable workers' rights, human rights, environmental quality principles in all of our trade agreements. They marched and they chanted and they said, not only we shall overcome, but solidarity forever, solidarity for workers. The Seattle WTO cast light upon the workings of the WTO. Seattleites, union members, trade activists, helped spark a worldwide awareness, helped spark a worldwide awareness that workers had to have rights and that there had to be environmental quality principles. And it was the people of Seattle who identified that child labor, slave labor, and prison labor had to be in trade, uh, that prohibitions on that had to be in trade agreements. Seattle brought that forward. You kept that alive. You've nurtured it. Large intentional gatherings like this one can be a catalyst for powerful change. But we have to be prepared, as George Bernard Shaw once wrote, to dream things that never were and ask why not. And let us dream about the America that we want. Let us give our dreams some firmament. Let our dreams and our thoughts become words. Let the words become deeds. Let our, action, our deeds become action. Let our actions build a new America and a new world. Seattle, you shook the world once. Can you shake it again? I ask you. Are you ready here, Seattle, to declare once and for all that it's time for America to end the wars in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and Libya? Are you ready to do that? Yes. Are you prepared to demand that our troops be brought home? Yes. Are you prepared to demand that America end its worldwide military presence? Yes. 
Are you prepared to demand that America must lead the way to nuclear abolition? Are you prepared, Seattle, to demand that we have to repeal the Patriot Act? Are you prepared, Seattle, to demand that government spying, eavesdropping, and wiretapping of law-abiding citizens must end? That our sisters' right to privacy be protected and decisions about women's reproductive health be made between a woman and her doctor? Are you prepared, Seattle, to say that our brothers and sisters who are gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered, have all full rights, including the right to marry? Are you prepared, Seattle, to demand the decriminalization and legalization of marijuana and demand hospitalization, not incarceration, for those with drug problems? Are you prepared to demand not-for-profit health care for all? Yes. Education for all? Yes. Retirement security for all? Yes. Jobs for all? Yes. Are you prepared to rescue our federal government from corporate interests by calling for a constitutional amendment which establishes only public financing of, of uh, federal elections. Are you prepared for that? Are you prepared to summon the energy to rescue our planet, to protect our air, our water, and our land from further exploitation by demanding an end to drilling the earth, fracking the earth, cracking the earth, and, and, and an end to the poisoning of our seas and our skies, and to make sure that we end this carbon-based solution and bring forward a rapid transition to an environmentally friendly, socially responsible, green economy. Yes. Yes. Seattle, Seattle, this day, here and now, you, through your responses, have voiced what I would call the Seattle Declaration. Let the sound of your voice today be heard wide and far. Let your affirmations give birth to new action, a new nation, and a new world. Let your voice once again cause America to march. Let your voice once again cause America to sing. Let your voice cause America to seek new freedoms. Let your voice call America to seek a newer world. Ours is a restless quest for freedom. We know wars make us less free. We know fear makes us less free. Social and economic insecurity makes us less free. If it is for freedom's sake that we gather, so then let us be for freedom's sake that we act courageously. Because it is our, and desire, it is our desire for change that carries extraordinary power to become more than we are, better than we are. Forged in the human heart, ignited by love and a passion for transformation, our common unity, our common purpose, and our common action can carry the power to change everything. This is the power of human unity. This is the power of our oneness. Feel it, own it, act upon it, Seattle. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Congressman Dennis Kucinich, give a hand.